Good evening. On November 2nd, 2021, the citizens of Winthrop will select the next council president. My name is Jim Letary and I am a candidate for that position. Before I tell you why I am the best candidate, let me first describe exactly what the position entails. The council president is a full member of the town council as well as the school committee with all voting rights. I had believed since we started this form of government that having that connection between the town and the schools is arguably the most important piece of the charter. When we wrote the charter, the purpose of doing that was to create a bond or a connection between the two entities. We are one town and we need to be on common ground with the schools. My passion for education and our school system is unmatched. I have taken a very active role and have in-depth knowledge of the school department budget, as well as curriculum, class size, testing, special education, athletics, and transportation. I believe a council president should not just take a seat on the school committee, but play an active role, contributing knowledge information to continue moving our school system forward. I will help fund our schools at the levels that enable our children to compete with their peers in other districts throughout the state and the country. The first item I would like to look at when I'm trying to make a decision on who to vote for, regardless of the position, would be the qualifications. Is that person qualified to be, in this case, council president? I believe that I check that box. Experience, leadership, knowledge, and maybe most importantly, character. Our qualities of a successful council president, and I strongly believe that I possess those qualities. I have been a counselor for 16 years, always keeping the interest of all citizens not a select few in every decision I make. I learn and more importantly, listen to both sides of every issue. I don't try to make the popular vote, I try to make the right vote. During my debate, my opponent stated that on more than one occasion, I voted on the losing side of a seven to two or eight to one vote. I believe he was absolutely correct. I will give you a few examples of such situations. A few years back, I questioned the Revere Street Tips project. On the surface, it looks like, and actually is, a great opportunity to refurbish that whole area with significant improvements. However, we were not addressing the infrastructure below. And now it's finally came out that we will have to address several easement issues, which will potentially cost the town over $500,000. Another vote was on the former town manager's performance review. The current council president gave a glowing review. My assessment was much different. Discussing many failures by the former manager, which went unchallenged by the council president. Another such vote we disagreed on was the extension of the former town manager's contract, which the council president pushed for and received a seven to two vote to extend that contract. Less than a month later, the manager left and Winthrop was tied up and ended up paying a substantial settlement. I must now once again respond to something that the council president stated during our debate. He stated that it was my constant questioning or as he put it, badgering of the former town manager in terms of decisions he was making which caused him to leave. The format of the debate did not afford me the time to fully respond. So I would ask the council president, if the town manager left because he couldn't handle my holding him accountable, why would we have offered him a settlement? Why wouldn't he have just walked away? The truth, as they say, is in the texts. Text exchange between our council president and former town manager along with subsequent text between the former town manager and the then police chief that paint a much different picture. 
In one text, the former town manager reached out to the police chief and says, I quote, I'm sending you this because Phil sent this to my work phone. I cannot in good conscience continue to work here. This has to stay between us, but I will be giving my notice this coming week. I'm also sending you this because I want to express my actual fear that I may face physical harm. Now to me, that makes a lot more sense as to why a settlement was offered. Now a side note, there was a forum held a week after the debate where I, like all the candidates, were given a two minute opening statement. I used the second half of my two minutes to say exactly what I just stated before you. However, unlike the other 13 people who gave their two minute statements, the last 60 seconds of my opening was cut, it's lost. I don't even know what to say about that. Also at last week's forum, the candidates were given two questions a week ahead of time that would have been asked, that were going to be asked at the forum and only required a 30 second response. One of the questions was asking what would be best use of the COVID money that the town would be receiving. My opponent, have, after having a week to think about it, said the town doesn't know how much money he would be, it would be receiving, but he would very much like to spend that money to build a public safety building. I followed with the same question and stated that we already knew how much money we had been receiving. It was going to be $5.4 million, of which we've already received half. There were very strict restrictions on how to use that money, and we're limited to water and soil infrastructure projects and COVID-related expenses, such as the health department. There's nowhere near enough money, unfortunately, to build a new public safety building. And this was not secret information. We had discussed it several times during council meetings and, in fact, had an email regarding this two days before the forum. My opponent had been the chair of rules and ordinance for his first 14 years on the council and was involved pretty much in all ordinances over that time, including the one that stated that a political sign must be no more than three square feet, which has been the standard in Winthrop for years, which begs the question as to why would the council president make his signs double the allowable size at six square feet? My opponent's shortcomings aside, the most immediate need that this town must address is securing a town manager. There has been a need for almost four months. My opponent has yet to even select a search committee. This is inexcusable and a disservice to our town for so many reasons. We currently have an interim treasurer, an interim fire chief, an interim CFO, along with an interim town manager. Until we secure a permanent town manager, we cannot fill any of the other positions since they are only filled by a permanent town manager. A typical town manager search will take between six and eight months, which means we will have to go through another budget cycle without a CFO, without a treasurer. A leader has to make decisions. Complacency, it's not an option. To come full circle, let me talk about my vision and how we will achieve it. First of all, we need to immediately begin a search for a town manager by creating a committee consisting of representation from the council, the school system, the business community, and multiple community members. We need to get our act together for fiscal 23. A public safety building has been discussed since the early 90s, to my knowledge, and probably before. Our center fire station was built in the 19th century when horses pulled the fire apparatus. We have done numerous studies over the year costing over $100,000. Now is the time we finally need to ask the citizens of Winthrop is there a willingness to fund this much needed project and let's try to get it done. Let's move on to the middle school site, which has been vacant for six years with little progress other than the planning board 
agreeing on the zoning. This is why leadership is so very important. Construction costs continue to soar, and we have not made any decisions yet. I will immediately do a cost-benefit analysis of different types of development. What is our goal? What does the town want to accomplish with this site? Is it strictly raising revenues? Is it gross revenues or net revenues? Or is it something else? No one seems to know. There has been much talk about what might go there. Is there going to be apartment units? Condominium units? Mixed use? Public safety building? Hotel? Green space? Youth center? School recreation site? School relocation site? The only thing we might get a consensus on is that the rink has to be part of that conversation. I understand what the zoning says, but the leadership of the council needs to take action now. We never seem to act, we always seem to react. I also believe we should create a parks department to maintain all of the assets that we have. We just built an incredible multi-use facility at Miller Field, rebuilt the tennis courts, as well as made safety improvements by connecting the sidewalks from Ocean View to South Main Street, giving our children and teachers a much safer and easier means to get in and out of the school. We are coming towards the end of completion work on the center infrastructure project, which includes many visual enhancements. All of these projects look great, but they need to be maintained. We have over and over been reluctant to maintain the beautiful facilities and parks we have created. Not due to a lack of effort, but due to a lack of vision from leadership. We need to create a department that is responsible and provide them the funds to do that. The DPW director has stated that it will cost between forty dollars and $50,000 yearly to maintain the center project. Miller Field will cost well over $40,000 a year to properly maintain. The tennis courts, although much less, still need a maintenance program. Coughlin Park, Ingleside Park, the Gorman and Cummings playgrounds, they all need to have maintenance programs and they all need to be done by a central location. I believe we need that single department to maintain all these facilities and parks. I was a member of the Charter Commission, which created our current form of government. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it's much more transparent and much more fluid form of government, and when used properly, is much more efficient than our prior form. I have been a counselor for over 16 years and have always put Winthrop first. I have given a tremendous amount of time and effort in that endeavor. I have been on the Finance Committee for 16 years and have been the chair for the past four. I have been on the Finance Commission, which is comprised of the Council's Finance Committee as well as the Citizens Committee for the past 16 years as well and, and am the current chairperson. I have been chair of the Rink Committee since its inception in 2008. I initiated financial policies which enabled Winthrop to save over $8 million in interest costs for the new school. I was on the school building committee for five years to help produce that beautiful new school. I co-chaired the Miller Field Committee, which was responsible for the Miller Field multi-use facility, as well as the Tony Fusillo Field House and the Patricia McGee track. And the Miller Field Committee also facilitated the building of the new tennis courts and sidewalk improvements. Countless hours have been given to, to fulfill these efforts, and I do not regret a single one of them. I now am asking you, the citizens of this great town, to give me the opportunity to use my financial knowledge, my ability to listen, and my ability to be a leader, and elect me as your next council president. I humbly ask for your support and your vote on Tuesday, November 2nd. I thank you for your time and I thank you for your consideration.